Over the years, she's opened up about her eating disorders, self-harm, mental illness, and substance abuse. And yet, according to her freshly released documentary, Simply Complicated, there's still a lot we don't know about Demi Lovato. Here are some of the most shocking revelations. Daddy Issues Lovato's birth father, Patrick, struggled with addictions to drugs and alcohol. Lovato's sister, Dallas, said of their dad, He would rage and yell and throw things, and Demi saw that. Lovato's childhood friend, Marissa Callahan, revealed, He would tell them he had cancer when he didn't, or he would tell them he's dying tomorrow when he wasn't. Patrick's addictions foreshadowed Lovato's own future struggles, and she believes that's what led her to substance abuse at a young age. My dad was an addict and an alcoholic, and I guess I always searched for what he found in drugs and alcohol. The New York Daily News reported that Patrick passed away from cancer in 2013. Lovato paid tribute to him with her song Father on her album Confident. Depression and Bullying when Lovato was young, she was obsessed with death and dying, and it wasn't until later that she connected that fixation to her mental illness. She said, I was depressed at a very, very young age, fascinated with death. Lovato's issues were likely exacerbated by the severe bullying she experienced when she was just 12 years old. One day, this girl, who was popular, started saying Demi should kill herself. She should slit her wrists. The result was a suicide petition passed around the school. Demi took a cue from the letter. So I went off of what they were calling me, which was a whore and being fat. Food as medicine. Lovato is still attempting to recover from her very first demon, an eating disorder. She said, Food is still the biggest challenge in my life. Body image, what I'm going to eat next, what I wish I could be eating, what I wish I didn't eat. You know, it's just constant. Mom Diana De La Garza, a former Dallas Cowboys cheerleader, admitted she had her own issues with food, saying, I may have passed that along to my kids, that wanting everything to be perfect and need to be thin and beautiful to be successful. Showstopper. By now, you've likely heard the story of how Lovato punched a backup dancer while on tour with the Jonas Brothers in 2010. But no one really knew the details until now. Lovato revealed that she had bought everyone in her band and all of her dancers dinner and booze that night. And that's how everything began. Somebody ended up getting weed. I was on Adderall. And... We had trashed the hotel. Someone told Kevin Jonas Sr. that Lovato was using Adderall. Lovato managed to coerce the Jonas patriarch into revealing that backup dancer Alex, Shorty Welch, had snitched on her. After that, Lovato punched Welch square in the face, then went to sleep. Her team promptly checked her into rehab for the first time in November 2010, where she would be diagnosed with bipolar disorder. Attempted Suicide Lovato's personal development and sobriety coach Mike Baer revealed that, at her lowest, Lovato attempted suicide. He said, She'd have, like, bags of pills and an eight ball of coke. We were in Palm Springs, and she locked her bedroom door. She's just taking a bunch of pills. Once they kicked down the door and Demi was rushed to the hospital, Baer said, The nurse is checking her in. The bottle of pills is there. She grabs the pills. She then downs all the other pills and says, You f if I just tried to kill myself, why would you give me access to pills?" Lovato was then temporarily sent to a psychiatric ward before being released. Preaching and Abusing While promoting her 2012 documentary, Stay Strong, in which Lovato praised the values of a sober lifestyle, she was still using drugs and nearly overdosed. There was one night where I used a bunch of coke and I popped a few of the NX bars and I started to choke a little bit. Lovato feared the worst. Oh my god, I might be overdosing right now. Lovato's manager, Phil McIntyre, was disgusted, but also not surprised. He recalled, And she was on air promoting this new way of life. And I was like, you're so full of it. Nearly losing it all. Lovato officially hit rock bottom in 2012. She said of the last night that she drank, I got really, really drunk. 
and I was so drunk that I threw up in the back of the car service on the way to the airport to perform on American Idol. After she performed Hungover, her professional team was so fed up that they almost quit at the behest of Bear and McIntyre. Bear then told Lovato they'd stay only if she destroyed her cell phone, which was filled with drug dealer contacts and triggers. Bear forced her to drop the phone into a vase full of water in front of her team. She explained, But it was the beginning of the process of surrendering. She's come a long way. Lovato revealed that she was under a tremendous amount of pressure as her family breadwinner during her Disney days, but she's come a long way in 10 years. She admitted, I've learned that love is necessary, heartbreak is unavoidable, and loneliness is brutal. And maybe most importantly, she says, I've learned that the key to being happy is to tell your truth and be okay without all the answers. Thanks for watching. Click the Nikki Swift icon to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Plus, check out all this cool stuff we know you'll love too.